Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2403. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah! Today I'm in Diamond Bar, California, the home offices of a, a little organization called ASEMA, with a very special guest by the name of RJ DeVera. RJ, welcome back to Cars Yeah! Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? There you go. Uh, I'm ready, Mark. Let's uh, let's put it in first and, and get it going. Have some fun. Now, you and I were chatting a little bit before we got started here today. You were a very early guest way back in 2016. And oh my gosh, how time flies. You were guest number 636. And you were a young fellow back then and uh, building a robust career, working uh, at McGuire's at the time. And I got got some people that call me and said you gotta have rj back because this guy's come a long way and i said i follow rj i see what he's been up to uh, he's a very busy guy and now you're at sema and i want to give you a proper introduction as to your title and a little bit about what you're doing and we're going to talk about sema because it's coming up very fast here but i don't believe i asked you this question when you were on the show before and i always start with this question with guests what's one little thing that maybe people don't know about you rj one thing that they don't know about me. Well, there's definitely people that know I, I was in a, in a in a small automotive movie called The Fast and the Furious. <laughs> yeah. But you wouldn't know it if you didn't come from that era or time. Mm. Uh, and so I'll meet a lot of new people today and, and inevitably someone from the early 2000s say, you know, RJ did work on that film and he was actually in it. So it's for some people they know, for a lot of people they don't. Um, and then I followed that up being a host and a judge on an, an MTV show called Trick It Out, which is definitely even more obscure than, than the movie because a lot of people know the movie and they're like, oh, you were that character. And, oh, you worked on it. But the MTV stuff's like, when, when did that come out again? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. another fun tidbit. Well, it's pretty cool. You know, and since then, I had a guy who's in that franchise, Louis De Silva Jr., uh, was a guest on my show earlier this year. And that was kind of fun to talk to him from an insider Hollywood star type guy. And, and what mm -hmm. a cool guy. And what it, it tells me is what I've learned after talking with so many people is, is car people are just car people. We're all just kind of normal folks. Uh, for those folks that are quite famous, when you talk cars with them, all that fame kind of goes out the window and it's just, hey, let's talk about cars. So yeah, I think you found the same thing, right? For sure, the the love and the passion for cars is, is a bond that uh, you connect with very easily, no matter where someone's from or their stature or their economic le you know income level. I mean, they're definitely there's just this thing that binds people together when you find someone else is really into modifying and personalizing cars. When I found SEMA is that way too. When you go to SEMA, it's kind of like going to Car Week at Pebble Beach or any of the other of the big car events. Of course, we just came off of Rensport. Is it's really about reconvening with old friends. You run into these people you haven't seen for sometimes a year. And it was like you just saw them yesterday because that car bond brings us together. Yeah, and, and it's also about making new friends, right, Mark? So, you know, there's a lot of events that I go to. I mean, I'm in a Cars and Coffee almost every weekend to, to, to kind of reconnect with my friends on a weekly basis. And then there's the bigger events like Car Week or Festival of Speed or Tokyo Auto Salon or SEMA where, you know, I know I'm going to meet a ton of new people, which is always great. And then I'm also going to reconnect with, you know, people from the industry or old business partners or, or things of that nature. And that's kind of the joy of all these automotive events, like where, like to your point, Rensport just happened. But I think that's why all these events always get so many enthusiasts that go because there's just it's so easy to to reconnect, uh, to nurture relationships, and then to build new ones, right? Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, let me give you a little bit of an introduction here, as if you need one. R.J. Devere is the vice president of marketing for the Specialty Equipment, a market association that we all know as SEMA. It's a nonprofit trade association founded way back in 1963. 63, I think I was four or five years old. <laughs> that, that, that represents the $51.8 billion specialty automotive industry. It's huge. RJ joined SEMA in 2022 after 12 years at 3M Company, 
a multinational Fortune 100 organization, helping lead the Meguiar's car care brand, we all know about them, under various roles, including global leader of communications and digital marketing, leader of customer engagement group, and associate director of public relations and event marketing and business development and product marketing manager. You must have a business card that's like, <laughs> like one of those golfer checks to put all those, yeah. those, those titles on there. Uh, we'll be back in a moment to talk to RJ more about SEMA this year because there's a lot going on. But first, a word from our sponsor. So buckle up and we'll be right back. Years ago, when it was time to renew my collector car insurance policy, my carrier's rates went up way up, but my usage was the same and I never made a claim. I didn't even have a ticket. So what's with that? So I turned to American Collectors Insurance. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? Then it's time to look around and call American Collectors Insurance. I shopped around, I asked friends for recommendations and found a winner that I can trust. And boy, I'm glad I did. I saved hundreds of dollars every year and slept better at night knowing my baby was properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by their history of taking great care of their clients. What could be better than that? So give them a call and ask for a quote today. 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 224 9324 and protect the ones you love like I did with American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. For several years now, you've heard me talk about Linkage Magazine. I've been a subscriber since the start. They're talented and creative team brings you a spectacular publication and website that shares the automotive passion from a worldwide perspective. Linkage is about driving, restoring, collecting, and first-hand experience at collector car auctions and more. They bring you real-world values plus rational, experienced opinions on the current markets. They cover the automotive world and the people who share our passions. And Linkage Magazine has grown, mailing you six issues annually. Join me on this journey with Linkage. They're geared for the automotive life. You can subscribe at LinkageMag.com. So RJ SEMA, it's coming up, but I wanted to go back a little bit for folks that perhaps didn't hear you on the show some seven plus years ago. Uh, your your career now is pushing 30 years. I mean, 28 getting years. Getting pretty close. Uh, yeah, yeah, getting pretty get, close. Getting old, young man. Uh, the automotive aftermarket industry selling car covers, performance parts. I mean, you did all these different things, but you really kind of started this out of your mom's garage. Is that right? Uh, quite literally my mom's balcony. We didn't balcony. Even have a garage. Oh my it, was gosh. Just a co- it was just a <laughs> condo on the West side, which he still lives in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started modding my, my very first car, which was a new car that my mom had kind of, you know, blessed me with, uh, cause she wanted something safe. Right. Yep, yep. Um, and, and I had already bought parts for a car. I didn't even know what I was going to have. I just knew it was going to be some sort of a Honda. Mm. Um, but I thought I was going to save up and, and buy a, a used Civic. And she's like, no, I'm going to give you something new because it's safer. Nice. And I started modding it. And in, in her eyes, it's like, it was, well, it's a new car. What are you doing? Yeah, are you crazy, son? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I had to you know, think on my feet. And I was uh, kind of very entrepreneurial at that point in my life that I had worked at the local auto accessory store selling car covers and I really wanted to sell performance parts. So mm. I told her I was going to start to sell the parts I was putting on my car uh, out of our condo. So I, I made a uh, flyers like you would to promote a, a, a nightclub mm-hmm. and started to put it at the, the cars at the local college and uh, started to attend some car shows, including the very first import car show in the U.S. Wow. And that's how and that's how I started. I was 17 years old at the time. You have built quite a presence uh, for yourself and quite a following because of this entrepreneurship you have in your blood and and attending so many events, and you're such an outgoing, personable person. I'm not surprised you've ended up where you've ended up here at SEMA because I've had Mike, of course, your CEO on the show, and so many other people from the SEMA departments. I mean, everything from past directors to people involved, uh, people that are heads of boards and so forth. And for you listeners, SEMA's coming up here very fast, October 31st through November 3rd. It's at the Las Vegas Convention Center. There's a couple things happening in Las Vegas this year. This is going to be a very robust SEMA. And I wanted to talk a little bit from your perspective 
what SEMA is all about? Because some people go, oh, that's that cool place where you can go and see a lot of neat cars and <laughs> see a bunch of businesses. And that's how they perceive it. For for those of us who've been many times, you've been 26 SEMAs, I've been to 30 of them. It is so much more and there's such so much more depth to this. So I'm going to start by talking about what this market does for the economy. I mean, I have some numbers here and correct me if I'm wrong, $337 billion in economy support and 1.3 million U.S. jobs. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, and that's all data from a, from a recent you know economic impact report that we did, much in the same way many industries, whether it's candy or alcohol or things of that nature, and where they really measure the impact that a certain industry has on the overall economy and everything that it touches. You mentioned earlier we're a $52 billion industry, and that's just direct sales, right? But think about all the people that are employed and all the things that, from an economic standpoint, the thing, you know, the shipping, the food, and everything that we contribute to because we employ 1.3 million people at the end of the day, right? And and how that affects and really contributes to the economy of America and the small towns of America because you know most of our members and manufacturers are really small businesses, right? At the end of the day, and so you, you find them all over the U.S. and in all 50 states. Um, they're, they're usually someone that manufactures something or sells an aftermarket parts or distributes an aftermarket parts or, or installs it or services it. So yeah, we, we found that we're, we're definitely a, a bigger uh, industry than we thought in terms of our economic impact, which is really great to share you know, to the world. And now that we know, now that we've done the study. It's incredible. Here's another interesting stat. The businesses in this market employ more than twice the number of people as the U.S. aircraft industry and more people than the entire motion picture and video production industry, which is like, what? But yeah, we're talking about 7,000 companies, right? Right, right, exactly. So, and there's even more in the aftermarket, right? They're not all members of SEMA. That's just the, the SEMA member companies. Mm. But if you think about the automotive aftermarket, it's a big industry. And, and sometimes you need reports like this to really kind of flush out the data to, to prove that. It's the first time I've seen something like this from the organization. So it was really great to, to support, you know, my colleagues who, who really did this research with the right organizations that do it for all the other industries. So. And the other part of this is 95%, I believe, are small businesses across the U.S. Correct. And I've had so many people on the show that have small businesses, as well as people that are large, like companies you work for, McGuire's, big company, employs a lot of people. But many of these are smaller businesses, family businesses, and all of this makes up such an important part of the U.S. And the other thing that is great about it is for the listeners here on Cars Yeah who wish they were having fun in the car industry and want to figure out a way to do it like RJ and I are doing. There are so many opportunities in so many different categories here and SEMA is one of those organizations that supports them all. Yeah, definitely. In, in terms of automotive aftermarket encompasses all of that, right? Mark, so again, it's, it's not just the people that are members of SEMA and the organizations, but it's it's the whole aftermarket industry and this passion that everyone shares globally at the end of the day. You know, we're looking at it from a, from a U.S. perspective, but think even broader than that and, and think more, you know, international or global and it gets even bigger. It's huge. Now, as your role there, a VP of marketing uh, for SEMA, can you tell me a little bit about what the different things that you're, you get involved in? Yeah. So our internal marketing organization at SEMA is actually more of an internal agency for all the business units at SEMA. So we get involved with every arm, whether it's the show or the government advocacy work or membership or our SEMA garage or our SEMA data. And anytime they want to market something, we're the internal agencies that helps execute that. So I get to see most of everything, all, all, although not always, depending on, on how many things are stacked in the queue of things we need to market. So it feels like home to me because I've been involved with the organization for a long time. You mentioned, you know, this will be my 26th show in a row that I've been to to the show itself. You know, this is only the second being part of the the group that helps put it together versus participating in it. But, you know, it still feels like home because I have at this point been around the industry a decent amount of time. Still yeah. got a long way to go and still got a lot to learn, but feel like I've seen some evolution, some change through the last 25, 30 years. 
so yeah, it's just really exciting to be involved in all the different things that we do. A lot of people, to your point, think of SEMA as just the show in Vegas, the B2B trade show in Vegas. But it's so much more than that, right? Because we're a membership-based organization that really looks to help our members, you know, grow and prosper. That's our mission. But we're also here to, you know, help, you know, protect and prolong this love for modifying and customizing cars and helping car culture continue to grow and expand. So um, there are different arms that many people don't know about. And we're working to, to get more people to, to know about the different membership benefits uh, they can have if they're a member of SEMA, and that in, in includes the things like SEMA data, SEMA garage, the advocacy work that we do, uh, which is, uh, you know, for a lot of people, kind of new news, you know, outside of, of the SEMA show. Well, yeah, and I wanted to touch on that. But one thing I want to mention also is I've, I've had a lot of people that reach out to me who are listeners and say, how do I get a job in this market? And I said, well, start mm. with SEMA because there's yeah. job postings <laughs> there. There's people that need people, and especially since COVID and how radically that changed the entire playing field for employment, employers, and workers. That is a big part, and SEMA can really play a really crucial role to help people do it. But I want to talk about this advocacy that you discussed. You just recently released what you call an interactive map that provides users with a state-by-state congressional and state house and senate data uh, that can help them where they can reach out there's so much well i'll pick on the government a little bit but they do get in our way from time to time and they keep things from happening and sema plays a massive part to help companies individuals and businesses more uh, more so than anything to get through some regulation i've talked about this with many of my guests, but can you dive a little deeper to what this is all about? Yeah, so it's twofold. We're definitely, you know, investing in and really strengthening our Washington, D.C. team as we look to advocate for more things in government and, and fight for the industry. Uh, an example of one is uh, there was some some dunes that were closed off by a local government agency in Central California that we took some legal proceedings in and, and had uh, that overturned so that, you know, those those dunes would be open for, for people to continue trekking through. So we'll get involved with things like that. And it just depends, you know, it just depends on, on the regulations and the laws that are being proposed or are implemented. And so we'll mobilize kind of ourselves and in, in terms of, you know, our um, our government uh, supporters um, and, you know, proposing bills and things of that nature to, to go against certain proposed regulations or, or laws that are implemented. We're mobilizing ourselves to be to get stronger in that sense. And that's why we've, we've got our sand, we've got our PAC, we've got our super PAC um, to really fund this, this government advocacy work that, you know, we need to continue to do to protect the industry. The other side of that is, of course, SEMA Garage. So SEMA Garage is, is a facility. We now have two, one in LA and one in Detroit, where we really help manufacturing members in product development and specifically with testing products for EPA or and or CARB certification. So we do help in that front too, in terms of how does someone develop a product for measuring sessions, 3D printing, things of that nature, and then into, you know, how do you test a completed product to make sure it falls within the regulations of, e, e, you know, EPA or and, and or CARB certification. So we kind of help on, on two ends of the spectrum. It's wonderful. Yeah, I've learned a lot more about that in the last year, and I didn't realize how in-depth uh, those two garages go. I mean, it's incredible what you guys are doing to help companies, especially young companies that don't have massive financial backing to go in and do uh, R&R, uh, R&D, I should say, r and They might have time, too much time for R&R, R&D, and to learn more about how we can build things that are great for aftermarket, make cars, enhance them in whatever way people want to do it. And I wanted to get your opinion on something, RJ, being a younger guy, this um, electric vehicle uh, phenomenon that is being, sometimes it feels like it's being pushed down our throats here a little bit. I wondered what your impressions are, your thoughts are on how that expansion of those types of cars are going to affect in a positive or negative way the aftermarket. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I can approach it from multiple perspectives. Personally, it's it's just another form of propulsion, right? We started with electric cars early That's in the right. 1900s, yeah, a lot of and people then went to shocked to hear that. Yeah, and then go, we went to steam, and then we went to you know gas powered cars, and even within gas, you've got carbureted to fuel injected, to, you know, to direct injection, and, and now EV. So I think it's a natural progression. 
I, I think, of course, you know, those changes in propulsion kind of, you know, help change and, and form the industry of the future. You know, from a different perspective as SEMA, we're really advocating a technology neutral future. Um, and some of the work that we're trying to do in government is is to work with the Senate and the House and, and you know, these EV mandates that are being proposed kind of advocating for letting the technology, whether it's biodiesel or synthetic fuel or hybrid or BEV, which is the full electric stuff, or um, hydrogen fuel fuel cell, letting the market decide what type of lower emission or zero emissions vehicle they want to drive in the future and not mandating just one technology. So, you know, that's going to kind of play out in the next five to 10 years, of course. How it's going to affect the aftermarket, I think people are always going to want to modify and personalize their car. There's not a whole lot that you can do with with the BEV power plant in terms of performance outside of right now what the the factory is going to offer you if it's uh, if it's a different mode like ludicrous mode for for Tesla, <laughs> right? So it'll be interesting to see how that evolves and and the great thing that I've seen with the the aftermarket you know, is everyone in our space is very innovative and so they're always finding ways to make things Better custom, looking, yeah. custom, faster, better performing. So it'll as that type of propulsion gets more popular, what are the upgrades or things that you can customize and, and how is the aftermarket going to develop and serve that? So, um, you know, to me, it's just another added form of propulsion. I think you're going to it's going to I mean, there's definitely and especially in California, uh, a good number of people who are, are leaning more into the EV side and, and and having that as their daily vehicle. And so you're seeing a lot more manufacturers and shops that specialize in Tesla tuning or EV tuning or doing EV conversions is another thing that's getting popular in some oh, yeah. you know segments of our industry, of course. So it's interesting because I think it's just new technology and it's going to take, you know, a little bit of time for people to kind of find their way with it. Some are going to specialize in it. So to me, it, it just makes it even more exciting my personal hope that it is it's not going to be a one type of propulsion for the future but it that it'll be multiple forms and that's exactly what we're advocating for you know from the SEMA side as well so yeah i think it's fine one thing i i did over car week was i rented a tesla for the first time and really got my first experience i think the last time i drove electric car was when the volt came out the chevy volt mm-hmm. long long ago decades ago i found I had more fun than I thought I would. Mm. So, uh, you know, despite the car was, to me, I'm a visual guy, I'm a Porsche guy. It was a rather boring look. Right. But the experience and the intuitiveness of how you use that big iPad in the yeah. center um, and some of the fun stuff I found out about, the whoopee cushion mode and some other things that uh, are kind of silly but make the experience uh, unique, um, it did change my mind a little bit. So uh, who knows? Who knows? We will see. Yeah, and you mentioned Porsche. You know, for me, the real eye-opening experience in an EV car was actually in a Taycan Turbo oh, oh, S. Yes, I did and, get to uh, drive one of those during car week. Holy cow. And you're like, wow. You know, it's it's a different feeling. It's a different form of excitement. Right. Um, it's very different from my, you know, V8 twin turbo <laughs> car yeah. or my 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 four cylinder Honda um, with a manual gearbox. That's very analog, and and to me, I love all of it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a great thing. There is all of it. Let's talk a little bit about what people who are going to be fortunate enough to attend a SEMA or maybe on the fence, uh, you should get off the fence and go. What are we going to be seeing at SEMA this year? That are some things that should be told. There's one big new thing, of course, with SEMA Fest, but I'll, I'll save that for, for after I talk about the B2B SEMA show. That's I think this is the 56th year that it's <sighs> it's running. Hard to believe. Yeah. Oh gosh, how could that be? Wow. And Tom Gattusa, who's our, our, who's our VP of events always likes to say the SEMA show is it's it's a reflection of the industry, right? So the things that you see change and evolve are usually stems from what you're seeing change and evolve within the industry. So there's there's new areas that, you know, like overlanding has been a new area for the last couple of years and just continues to get bigger because there's a huge market in it right now, you know? Um, so that space continues to grow and change. Uh, the stuff out front continues to evolve. I think it's going to be shells area out front this year versus eBay last year. And so I'm curious to understand what driving demos they have. Optima still has their streetcar challenge as well. But the halls are, you know, we're, I forget the night, I think it's 11 or 12 shows in one. And then when you say that, people start to go, oh yeah, now I realize why it's as big as it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, every hall is pretty full. We've made a big transition with SEMA Electrified, which is our 
section that that really focused on emerging EV technology in the aftermarket. And we've evolved that to something called the Future Tech Studio. We kind of talked about it earlier where we do really want to highlight the innovative technology that's going on in prop- in all forms of propulsion, including hydrogen, like you mentioned, and uh, biodiesel, and then, of course, battery electric hybrid solutions. And so we are making a very concerted effort to really highlight all of those technologies and other automotive technologies like 3D printing and things of that nature. So that's going to be an evolved space, and it's also moved from North Hall to Central Hall for the listeners that know the SEMA show well. Oh, okay. So there's some changes for sure. You know, new products moved as well from South Hall to, to North. And then Battle of the Builders, it's its 10-year anniversary. Oh, wow. So that competition continues to get more fierce. Um, but we're looking good. You know, we're over 2,000 vendors. I think we're at 1.1 million square feet. So oh, we're almost gosh. close to pre-pandemic numbers, close to. And one of the fun facts is we, we roll out it's either 23 or 26 miles of aisle carpet. So if you walk every inch of every aisle, just on the inside, not even the outside, you you would have ran a marathon. So is, is that why every time I go to see my wear out, you know, my socks, you know, <laughs> my shoes? Yeah, wear co- you know, back in the old days when I first went, everyone wore suits. And, yeah. Oh my gosh, that was uncomfortable and hard shoes. And after about three days, you'd, you'd go and get that ice bucket from your hotel and you'd put it in your sink, sink and soak your feet, you know, in ice because it was just, now it's it's much more casual, much more friendly. Um, not that it wasn't friendly back then, but yeah, I think you know what I mean. More comfortable. Yeah, and it's just gotten so much bigger. When you started going, it, it doesn't sound like it's it's too far away from when I started going. There was just Center Hall and North Hall. And you could still park up front. You know? I, I know, I know, yeah. And, and now it's so much different. But you're right. I think the industry has changed the way people do business has changed. And it, it is more casual in, in the way that you put it. I think people's business relationships, it isn't as formal as before, even though it's always been about relationship. Um, and I think the way people conduct business now is just different from, you know, 30 years ago, right? So, you know, again, we're just a reflection of, of the industry and, and, the, and what's going on in, in the business world. But people still really, you know, find this immense value with meeting each other face to face and doing business face to face, right? And so that's what's really great for us. You know, we're a show that's centered around innovation, passion, and opportunity, and, and building meaningful connections. And we feel like we still deliver that. Um, there's still great energy. It's it's been a great what's the right word evolution or exit out of the pandemic. You know, we we, yes. we had a show in 21, 22, 20, and now 23, and the momentum's coming back really, really strong, which is really great to see. Um, and I think people are hungry just to connect, right, to your point earlier and, and to reconnect. So yeah, To get out. I would encourage uh, anyone going, use the SEMA Show app. It's really cool. Uh, it's very helpful. And if you're going to connect with people, it's easy uh, to do so, to find people and so forth. That's a, a pretty cool tool that uh, I've started using over the years. Uh, there's a wonderful awards banquet you guys do. They have a SEMA cruise even, which is cool, educational classes. I mean, it's a full, full week. I mean, it's four, four solid days of shows open. Is and, that right? And w- yes, and we made it even longer. <laughs> oh, you have? Have you? Yeah. So we've got an event at the end on Friday and Saturday called SEMA Fest. Uh, we used to have something called SEMA Ignited, which was which was the SEMA show after party that was open to the public. Uh, and we've evolved that uh, because we know the markets evolve. And so there's a lot of our exhibiting companies and member companies that want to do more direct-to-consumer things. And, and also as an association, we know we want to draw more more people into the space and get them interested and turn them into enthusiasts. So we were seeing a trend, or at least our, our sales team was seeing a trend where trade shows were kind of festivalizing themselves. And so we embraced that. And so we're, we're throwing a motorsports and music festival oh, wow. at the end of the week with some really big musical acts. Uh, Incubus, uh, Wiz Khalifa, Ludacris, and a bunch of others are headlining wow. Friday. And then Imagine Dragons and Third Eye Blind and AJR and a bunch of others are headlining it on Saturday. Las Vegas, baby. <laughs> yeah, Las Vegas. So, And then we're coupling it with some some really great motorsports activations from Nitro Circus and Hoonigan and Formula D. And really trying to meld those worlds together, you know, because at the end of the day, cars and music do, do go hand in hand. Uh, and it's all part of the lifestyle. So we've, we've kind of extended the week per se and we're hoping that our attendees that are there for business stay 
you know, the extra night or, or two days to, to kind of let loose and kind of celebrate the week of, of business that they've done. And then we're also inviting, you know, um, enthusiast customers, the general public to come experience kind of automotive culture at its best. You know, there's a ticket that does allow a certain number of people to attend a SEMA show on Friday if they've never had the opportunity being a non-professional in the space. Uh, so we call that the SEMA Friday experience. And mm-hmm. we've had it for a couple years and we've limited the tickets there, but it is an opportunity for enthusiasts that think of SEMA as just a car show to really understand what it is as a B2B trade show and feel all of that energy. And then of course, enjoy all the festivities with the music and the motorsports activities and, and the midway and the whole nine at SEMA Fest. So it's almost two, two events in, in one week which is making uh, this year a little bit more hectic than normal. <laughs> you think? Oh, my gosh. You guys have a full plate. It's just incredible what you and your team pull off. It's just an amazing group of people, an amazing event, and they're easy to find listeners. Just go to SEMA.org. Is that right for the website? Yeah, SEMA.org is the hub. For the SEMA show, it would be SEMAshow.com. For SEMA Fest, it would be SEMAfest.com. Uh, kind of two separate things that are all part of SEMA.org. So it, it, there's a lot going on, Mark, to your point. So Just absolutely incredible. So before I let you go today, uh, we didn't really talk a lot about you and your personal passion for cars. And you've been on the show before, but, you know, you've grown up a little bit more since you were on the show before. And it's been seven years. So I want to ask you this question just to kind of crawl into your head a little bit here. Sure. Um, if I were going to park something really cool in your driveway and say, you know what, buddy? You can have this car. You can go have some fun. Take it anywhere you want. But here's the cool part. You can take anybody with you. Even somebody who's no longer with us. Somebody from the past, which opens up a world of unique opportunities. What does that special ultimate ride look like for you these days? Well, I'm a big F1 fan. And, and my her- my hero is Ayrton Senna, who's uh, <laughs> Mine too. no longer with us, right? And, and died in a, in a very big way. Mm-hmm. So he would be kind of top of my list. I'd love to meet people you know, that did, you know, uh, were the founders of certain car brands and try to understand what was in their head, you know, like Ettore Bugatti would be one I'd love to take a ride with, Enzo Ferrari, of course, the Ford family, you know, just to understand, like, you know, in that moment in time, what were they thinking? And I'd love to kind of do that with different people through different years at at different moments in time. So that would be really special to me as well uh, in terms of those drives. So I I would say those are the top ones. There's a bunch of race car drivers I'd love to take a drive with or or kind of take a ride along with, right? So that would be my answer to that. So just for maybe this time, what car would it be that I could give you so my favorite time of my favorite car of all time is a mclaren f1 so i okay. guess i could have uh two guests i could yeah. i could ride yeah, with three people side. total yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i and gordon murray i mean I've, I've seen him at some of the events i've never had a chance to talk to him he'd be one i'd love to sit down he has a very specific philosophy on, on the ultimate sports car as evidence with his new his new vehicle plus you know of course the original mclaren f1 so that would definitely be the car i mean my my two other favorites are anything 30s bugatti sc atlanti mm-hmm. of course how can you not like that it's probably the most valuable car in the world right it's kind of like the mona taste, lisa my friend Holy cow. i know <laughs> i've been around too many concourse events i think and uh oh wait there's another one okay keep going yeah and 300 sl going would oh, be the nice. other okay well, that would be the cheapest one of the group that you're talking about. <laughs> I know. About. Isn't that crazy? It is a little bit crazy. I got to chat with Gordon a little bit at the Quail event during Car Week and see the new ride he has. But yeah, there's nothing like that. I, I mean, how do you top the McLaren F1? And, and think about that car. How long it's been around and it still looks like a new supercar. Yeah, no, and that that was the time for me, the 90s, where you know I really, really fell in love with cars. I was already falling in love with cars but that was that era of nsx and 355 and mclaren f1 and clk gtr and all of those really nutty you know kind of lm car type cars right and so well there's a few of them nowadays holy cow and then you add the there's the, uh, a lot the ev component to some of these yeah. things and they are just scary rocket ships i mean it's yeah. just mind-boggling well before i let you go i always ask my guests to leave us with some words of inspiration and i know last time we spoke your mission and purpose in life was to have a positive impact on the industry and culture and that seems to be, still be your trend especially given where you've landed 
recently with SEMA. So what kind of uh, words of inspiration could you leave us with today? Wow, that's that's a that's a, <laughs> a big that, ask. O- that opens it that opens it up, Mark. Yeah. No, my, my purpose is still the same. And, I, and from a micro perspective, if I look at how can I help people and organization build better versions of themselves, specifically in automotive. And that's how I feel if I'm able to do that and able to kind of help spread this love for this culture and then hopefully, you know, prolong and protect it, which my values really align with, with the, with the association values, which feels really good. And my words of inspiration is just to be involved, you know, and, and to, you know, really, um, be open arm to all enthusiasts. And, and if you love it, share it and to always stay curious. You know, I think curiosity makes us open. It forces us to always continue to learn and, and be better each and every day. And then there's an awareness that I think we all have to have as well of, of what's going on in our world and how, how can we as one person make it better for whether it's one individual or multiple individuals. So, you know, I think that that awareness and, and that purpose and, and focus to be involved where you can and to share is important, you know, especially for ind- industries like ours that's going through so much change and evolution. Um, and it's so tied to the OEMs and the government and everything else that's it's coming to be. So, you know, I think we have to become bigger. We just have to be more involved in, in it, you know, and not, and not just be passengers, That's definitely what you've done, my friend, in your career path. And I look at your career path and where you've come from and and where you are and, of course, where you're going. Uh, You walk your talk. So I I can't thank you enough for for what you're doing for all of us and uh, for coming back and spending some time with me today. And I want to do a shout out. Thank you to my good friends at Con Media and Jess uh, Aikens there who got RJ back on the show here today. So Jess and all the team at Con Media, they bring me so many wonderful people. Uh, Great organization there. RJ, I can't wait to see you at SEMA. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you at this year's SEMA show. Thanks, Mark. See you there. You're welcome. That was fantastic. Did you know that Cars Yeah! is in the top 1% of all podcasts based on listenership, according to Libsyn, the premier RSS feed for podcasts in the United States? That's right. Plus, DuPont Registry recommended Cars Yeah! is one of their top 10 car podcasts for you to enjoy. Cars yeah has experienced tremendous growth, plus your ads are evergreen, meaning they never go away. And more and more listeners find Cars yeah every day for their daily dose of automotive inspiration. Do you want to expose your brand to a highly targeted list of automotive enthusiasts in a very unique and very personal way? Well, I can help you. Contact me, Mark Green, at mark at carsyeah.com or through the website at carsyeah.com today to learn more. If your car started today, well, thank a tech. If that truck delivering your goods today got to your home or your business, thank a tech. If that airplane you rode in took off and landed safely, and if that boat you're riding in arrived at the dock safe and sound, that's right, thank a tech. One thing the pandemic has taught us is that great techs keep America rolling. They are essential workers and we need them. Support career and technical education by getting involved with TechForce Foundation. It's a Cars Yeah! charity of choice. Learn more at techforce.org today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.